Here are the four problems that I'll go through today. This is the Euler totient function and we use the Greek letter phi to represent it. And so often we'll just say, in the case of the first question, what is phi 41? So let's talk about phi, the Euler totient function. In English, it's the number of integers between 1 and n whose GCD with n is 1. If you'd like to look at it uh, more mathematically, we can create a set and these two um, vertical lines mean we count the number of elements of the set and it's the set of x from where x is between 1 and n and the GCD of x and n is equal to 1. So a simple example is phi 6. We're concerned with the numbers between 1 and 6, so we write them down. Underneath we just write the GCD of those numbers with the number 6. And you can see there's only 2 that have a GCD of 1. And so 5 of 6 is equal to 2. Now this works well for 6. We can count it that way. But once you get into bigger numbers, you need some uh, rules that make it easier. So the first rule we're going to use is this one. If p is a prime, then phi of p is equal to p minus 1. And we can use that for our first problem, which I've indicated here, uh, phi of 41. So, solution. The number 41 is prime, so phi 41 is equal to 41 minus 1, which is equal to 40. And you can probably see why that is. 41 is prime, it only has two divisors, 1 and 41 itself. So every number between 1 and 40 has a GCD of 1 with the number 41. Before I go on to number 2, just remind you I've got tons and tons of videos for uh, first and second year university students, how things work, uh, fun mathematics, a whole lot of things, so have a look at that if you're interested. Let's go on to our second question now, where we're asked to calculate phi of 32. And 32 is not a prime number, so we can't use rule 1, but what we can do is use rule 2. And that says that if p to the n is a prime power, then phi of p to the n is equal to p to the n minus p to the n minus 1. And you can sort of see why that's true. We've got p to the n minus p to the n minus 1. Well, that p to the n is the actual number that we're trying to get the result for. And what we're taking off is p to the n minus 1, and that's the number of uh, times p to the n is divisible by p. So you might think about that later, and you probably get comfortable with this, with this rule. And we can use that now for phi of 32, because 32 is a prime power. So here's a solution. We have 32 equals 2 to the 5, so phi of 32 equals 2 to the 5 minus 2 to the 4 equals 16. OK, now let's go on to the next one, phi 35. This is actually a very interesting one because it's the product of two prime numbers. And um, it turns out that this is arguably, this rule I'm going to show you, rule 3, is arguably the most financially important equation in the history of mankind. It's arguable, but it's probably one of them because it underpins uh, most of the encryption. Uh, that we use today. If you're interested uh, at a intro level, have a look at my video, The Life of Prime Part 1. If you want something a little bit harder, have a look at how encryption works. And if you want the whole, all the gory details, have a look at RSA Code Made Easy and you'll see where the Euler Totient function comes into it. But anyway, our rule number three tells us what to do if we've got, um, we've got the product of two numbers that are co-prime, or the GCD of those two numbers is equal to 1. So it says that if the GCD of m and n is equal to 1, then phi of m times n is just equal to 5m times 5n. So we can use that in, the, in this case, because we've got phi 35 is equal to phi of 7 times 5 equals phi of 7 times phi of 5. We can use that rule 3, because 7 and 5 have a GCD of 1. And now we just go 7 minus 1 times 5 minus 1, which is the rule for the primes, and we get 24. Great. Nearly, nearly done. Just thought I'd put this up. Um, this is just something I've been working on lately and, and uh, trying to sort something out. And uh, you can see there there's the phi 
I've got their phi, it's, it's ugly. It's a phi of a, a flawed expression here, n on a divided by j. It's really, really messy. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to work it out, but I just wanted you to see that this oilitation function does come up very often in number theory type papers. Okay, now let's go on to phi of 600. Now there's no new rules here, we just have to use the rules that we've got so far. So what we can do is, firstly let's express 600 as the product of 2 to the 3 times 3 times 5 squared. And now we can look at the 2 cubed and the 3 and say, well, the GCD of 2 cubed and 3 is 1, and the GCD of 3 and 5 squared is 1. And so we can actually split this up using rule 3. So we get 5 2 cubed times 5 3 times 5 5 squared. Now we can use, in the case of 2 cubed, we can use that prime power rule. So we get 2 cubed minus 2 squared. 5 3, we just use the, the for rule number 1, the prime rule. We get 3 minus 1. And 5 5 squared, um, we can use the prime product rule and we get the answer of 160. Now, just before I finish up, there is another way to do these problems, but I don't normally recommend them. The, the rules that I've given you are important rules to understand in terms of the sort of situations you'll use the Eulertotion function at university. So it's important that you try and get comfortable with rules 1, 2 and 3. But there is a formula for 5n and it says this, suppose the only prime numbers, uh, prime divisors of n are p1, p2 through to pk. Then 5n is just n times, you can see here, 1 minus 1 on p times 1 minus 1 on p2 and the product continues right up to 1 minus 1 on pk. So let me just put that up for, if we wanted to do that for 600, we could solve it in this way. The only prime divisors of 600 are 2, 3 and 5. And you can see I've done the calculations there. And fortunately, I get the same answer, 160. So that's it for the Euler-Totion function made easy. I hope you found it useful.